Hey guys, Squirth Camel. Um, <laughs> one of the things I love about uh, running a bike parts uh, design manufacturer sales company is that all of the crazy ideas that pop into my head, um, I have the option to explore them a bit. And I have, you know, the relationships at machine shops and whatnot that, that I can get uh, some of these parts made for a reasonable price. So it's, it really is a dream job for me. Uh, just as I'm laying in bed, can't sleep, weird things pop into my head. Sometimes I literally wake up in the middle of the night with some crazy idea. I've got a notepad by my bed and I'll scribble stuff down and wake up in the morning and half the time I don't even know what I was talking about when I was half asleep. But something that I have been thinking about for quite a while uh, is a recovery system for the R1200GS uh, a while back probably three years, uh, Chris Birch had posted a video of him getting ready for the Romaniacs uh, race when he was going to do it on the 1090. Um, and he was worried about some of the climbs at Romaniacs and uh, had come up with a wheel winch idea. He had tied a rope around one of the spokes on the brake side of the rear wheel. And as the tire turned, it wound rope up between the spokes and the brake rotor until you hit the caliper and then use the rope brakes. But you get about 10 feet uh, or so of, of winch action to get the bike up and out of something. And I started thinking, wow, that's, that's a really cool idea. And that would work on basically any bike, dirt bike, adventure bike, every bike except the R1200GS. Now, also started thinking, what bike could really use that? We have the most popular adventure bike um, ever in the, the RGS series, and they get ridden all over the world. They get ridden on BDRs. They get ridden all over the place. They get ridden places that they shouldn't get ridden, and I'm totally cool with that. That's, you know, riding adventure bikes like we do. Usually we're riding them places that we shouldn't, me and my friends anyway. Um, so I was thinking, well, the, the, this bike being as big as it is, as heavy as it is, uh, there's a lot of uh, older riders that have them. There's not a lot of 20-year-olds floating around on 1200s. Um, so a lot of retired people, and uh, they're, they're a lot of bike to manage. You get one stuck in the snow. You get it stuck in the sand, the mud. You put your bike in a ditch, right? You skid off the road, put your bike in a ditch, and there's wet grass, and you have a 50-50 tire, or you have street tires, or you have whatever, and you cannot get up and out. Do you walk out? leave your bike there, leaves you in a really, uh, really crappy position. Even if there's two of you on the bike, you know, a loaded R1200, three piece luggage, all of that, you know, you're over 600 pounds. Um, it's pretty easy to get one stuck to the point that a, a couple of people have a really hard time getting it out. So um, a challenge uh, making a wheel winch that's gonna work on this bike. So I know that there are um, electric winches like Warren has one that comes in a bag and you can, you have cables that you put on the bike and then the winch gets strapped around a tree and then you put it to the forks and pull it out. That's an option for sure. There's recovery kits, uh, Z-line recovery kits that have uh, pulleys and clevises and ropes. And you can, you know, using uh, the, the pulley system, you can recover a bike. That's definitely an option as well. Um, but I just, it wasn't what was uh, kind of in my head. Uh, we've got a motor, we've got a transmission, we've got a drive line, we've got a rear tire that's spinning. So can we wind rope up with that and use it as a winch? We can. Um, so I'm going to introduce to you the Camel Toe, T-O-W. Um, it is, this is the guy here. So we have a drive disc with a square bore and we have a winch drum with 50 feet of synthetic line on it. And we have a fairing fairing, fair lead, I should say, and an abrasion sleeve. Um, there's also a tree saver uh, kind of strap that goes around fence post, rock, um, tree, whatever you're going to be anchoring the bike to. Uh, and I will show you how this all goes together. So we needed a way to power the winch. So I came up with this drive plate that comes in from the wheel stud side. So we've taken these lug bolts out and we've replaced them with ours and they've got a longer shank on them. So you take the drive disc and you 
pop it in here like so. Um, first, I'm going to back up here. We've got the square bore here and we've got a square drive shaft. I'm going to slide that in and then we're going to take the bolt here and put this in. This stuff would be different on production kit. Um, this is just kind of pre-production. The, the bolts and things will be a little better fit um, and just a little bit easier to go together. But we've got the, we've got the drive shaft here into the drive disc. And we're gonna slide that in and give that a push. And then we can go around to the other side. So you can just see the square drive here. So then we're gonna take our winch drum also has the square drive, slide it in. From the other side, you wanna push on the, uh, the drive plate and just give that a little twist until that locks into the square drive. And then we're gonna take our second bolt here with the appropriate Allen wrench, which this isn't. So we're gonna take the bolt here with our Allen key and Get this guy started. Like so. So I've got the drum on the back wheel, we've got our winch rope, and we've got a section of abrasion uh, liner here. And we have all the sharp bits, the foot pegs, uh, skid plate, center stand, uh, shift lever, etc., that we don't want the rope scraping on as it goes by. So that's why I've got the abrasion liner there. And then we realized rapidly during testing that you need a fair lead on the front of the bike. Otherwise the back end of the bike just tries to pass the front as the winch gets wound in. So it just always ends up that the bike keeps going off to the right hand side and the back end kind of comes around the left. So we made a little fair lead here, which is aluminum and the abrasion sleeve fits on it. So I come up to the front, there is the uh, 12 mil bolt that is the front axle retainer. I'm gonna pop that off. So I've got a bolt here that's going to thread into the axle where the um, axle uh, bolt was. And so we're gonna put the Allen wrench through and just on top of the line and you can get to the bolt. And this way, when the rope pulls, it keeps the front of the bike pointed forward. Um, we've got a little video here of us doing uh, a pull today. Uh, it was hard to find a reasonable place to shoot the video and show you. It's despite being the end of March, um, we have a bunch of snow in most places. And today it was minus 10 Celsius. Somehow uh, the hill that we were on, even though it was minus 10, was muddy, it was greasy muddy. Um, and you can see it on the wheels. Uh, the bike had no traction getting up this hill. And uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll let you have a look at the video. So we've got something solid to winch to here. We wanna go as straight in line as possible. And we're gonna go as low on it as we can. So these are straps that we have specifically made for the kit. And you always wanna make sure you double them up because you double the strength on it that way. I'm gonna take the eye off the rope. Click that guy in. And then we're just gonna spool this out till we get back down to the bike. Forgot to take the fair lead in the uh, abrasion liner with me. So when you do this, just push the line down low so you get the wrench over top of it. So I've already got the drive puck pushed in on the other side. I'm engaged with the lug nuts.
and then a bolt in the middle here. This will line up much easier on the production stuff. Start the bike, first gear, just enough throttle not to stall it. The back tire is going to spin quite a bit uh, just because of the size difference on the drum compared to the wheel. The wheel needs to be spinning to wind the rope in. I recommend standing on the opposite side of the bike from the rope. If you're on the bike, there's a possibility that if there's slack in the rope, you can get it tied or twisted around your leg. If you let the rope out or the clutch out and it tightens up the rope, obviously it's less than ideal. be a bag with the kit so all the stuff will get stored together um, we opened this end up to mimic the same size opening as in your axle so this actually nests in to save some space so this kit um, the strap is down there but anyway the strap winds on here this is about eight inches tall and about six and a half inches around so it's quite similar to the CD cases of yesteryear. So I know a bunch of you that are watching this <laughs> are saying, you're gonna blow up the final drive. Um, you're an idiot, put a knobby on your bike. Uh, you should have bought a 450. Uh, if you can't get your bike through this section, that section, you shouldn't be on that road to begin with the usual stuff. Um, the purpose of this kit is not to um, winch in our 1200 up a waterfall in Moab. Um, you know, you're not going to go out and do a Mossaback cliffhanger with this bike because you have wheel winch and you can. Uh, we have tested the hell out of this and we have got uh, this bike and a couple other 1200s up some ridiculous sections. Um, slimy rocks covered in, in moss and mud and stuff. I'm like literally like that tall. Like you can't you can't hang on to the bike. Um, you're actually sitting on the bike, riding it up. If the rope broke, you'd be in, you'd be in trouble. But um, it is incredible the capability of this bike with this winch. Um, you can the places that you can get. And again, I'm not suggesting that that's what it's used for. The you know practical application of this kit is to, uh, like I said before, you're out riding and something happens, you get the bike stuck. You know you can bury these bikes rapidly if you're not paying attention. Um, you know, sand, mud, especially. Um, and if you come to a section of road where there's a washout, you don't have enough fuel to go all the way back around. Um, you know, like I said, you hit the ditch and you're trying to get it out and it's it's greasy mud or uh, wet grass and you have a, you know, you don't have the appropriate tire for where you currently find yourself. It is a recovery system, not a let's make this thing super capable and now I don't have to go buy a 450, which of course is... Uh, not the uh, not the intended purpose. Uh, so yeah, we've tested it um, a lot in a bunch of different applications, and it works extremely well. I know uh, the <laughs> I know the number one thing people are going to say is, "Oh my God, you're going to blow the final drive up. What are you, an idiot?" Blah blah blah. Uh, this is the drive wheel for the system. Um, it's driven by three M8 bolts, and this is plastic. Uh, the final drive on the bike. You know, in previous years, previous generations, uh, you know, there's lots of horror stories about final drives blowing up. Um, the three M8 bolts on here will shear off long before you do any damage to the final drive. 
even if you didn't shear the M8 bolts off, the plastic drive wheel would come apart. Um, the amount of torque that you're putting to the final drive when you have um, a, a rider, a passenger, luggage, and you're hard on the throttle, accelerating off a light or accelerating up a mountain pass, far, far surpasses uh, the amount of torque that we're applying to the final drive with the back tire spinning in the mud with the tiny little drum. Um, and we're, you know, we're barely off idle. We're a couple thousand RPM uh, to get this winch winding in. Um, so yeah, no, no worries. We've done, we've done 60 pulls with this in some pretty nasty situations. Um, if you're in a situation where you've got the bike totally wedged into a rock face that's undercut and the bike is jammed and whatever, the bike just stalls. Um, if you are going to be an idiot and rev the shit out of it and you're bouncing off the you know rev limiter and you dump the clutch, um, yeah, you're probably gonna break some stuff, right? But that's not, that's not what the, the product is intended uh, to be used or not how it's intended to be used. I know that there are going to be a ton of questions and there's going to be a ton of hate about this product. I've been laughing about it since, since I started working on it and it was, uh, um, you know, it's a comment that's come up quite a bit with, uh, with friends and, and people that I've worked with on the kit that it's going to be 95% of people are going to say it's the dumbest thing they've ever seen and 5% are going to say shut up and take my money. It is what it is. Um, I am fully prepared uh, for all of the internet hate. It is what it is. Um, leave me a comment uh, and uh, yeah, we'll try and get it answered. We're gonna do some demo videos on this. I don't have an ETA for production. I just wanted to uh, do a launch and show you guys what I'm working on. If you are interested in the product, uh, send me an email and uh, we'll get you on the waiting list. Thanks for watching. <laughs>